Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Food Master Series. I am Amelia Carbine, I'm your host today and, and presenter also. Um, it's, I, I really enjoy doing these trainings and I, I love when we can bring people on and I love doing them myself also because I, I just love sharing. I think it's, it's really fun. And uh, I love that you guys are all here, it's, it's always fun. And for those of you that can't make it here live, I, I understand people have lives and, and uh, just make sure you come back and watch it later and, and, uh, and it'll be lots of fun. <laughs> okay, so today we are going to be talking about wafer paper flowers and digital cake sketching. So these are, in, in my opinion, these are the two hottest things in the cake decorating uh, scene right now. I know that uh, there, there are quite a few new things that have come out this year, but these are two of the things that I, I think are really pretty huge. And so we wanted to uh, talk about this some more and uh, bring you guys a little bit more information. For those of you that aren't familiar with digital cake sketching, I suggest that you guys go over to um, the digital face or digital cake sketching Facebook group. Um, I have a link for it here. Let me throw it up here for you really fast. Bobby sent it over to me. Okay, sorry. All right, here we go. You guys can see this right here. That's our Facebook group, so Digital Cake Sketching. And um, it started just a, a few weeks ago. It is. It has just exploded. And um, I, when, honestly, I, to be perfectly honest, when I started this group, it was after we had a training with Liz Merrick, which I really highly recommend that training for those of you that want to do digital cake sketching. She did an amazing job of explaining everything. I know I probably won't be able to explain as much as she did then because I need to get onto the wafer paper flowers also. And, you know, it's already there. So uh, if, if you see like what you see, haven't done, uh, haven't seen Liz's uh, training yet, go find it. It's, um, it's on the website, kpoo.com, uh, in the master training section uh, under Liz Merrick. So, um, go, go check that out because it's huge and tons of information and uh, she did she does a really good job and on the on the group she adds in more videos that you guys can go and see so it's really really great information and also the group is really great at you know lots of good questions lots of people jumping in to answer that, that understand and know how things work and so you know a lot of good question and answer uh, things going on there. So join us. <laughs> All right, for the wafer paper side of things, uh, there is a new Craftsy class out, and I will show you guys the, the Craftsy class link right here. And uh, wafer paper flowers, kp.com, wafer paper flowers. Follow that link. Um, that will take you to a wafer paper flower class on Craftsy. Uh, what I'm going to be teaching today is kind of an add on of, of that. So I, I'm not really doing, you know, the whole thing from Craftsy because Craftsy has it. <laughs> so I'm just showing you guys, you know, one, one flower and, um, that, I, that I have come up with that I think was really cool and a lot of people were asking about it. So I thought I would share that with you guys today. So that's a good one to do. Um, let's see. And just to throw it in there, uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a, a rose class, a gum paste rose class, and um, I think we're throwing it back up on sale again today, I think. Um, maybe not. I, I'm not sure. I, Bobby can answer that. <laughs> but uh, this is where that long stem rose cake foo uh, class is. Um, it was my first ever official class, so I hope you guys like it. I hope it's... Uh, well done enough. You guys can appreciate it and, and uh, get what's going on. I'm sure we'll get better as time goes on. And uh, let's see. Oh, if you did not, for anyone that did purchase the Longstem Rose class and didn't get 
the link if that has happened to somebody. We've had a lot of people um, asking, I didn't get it, where, you know, when can we expect this? Uh, check your junk mail folder. If you can't find it, send us an email. We'll get it to you because it's, you know, uh, you should have it by now. <laughs> it came out, a, you know, couple, a, a, at least a week ago. So, all right. Um, all right. I think that we're good and we can just jump right into things. Okay. So, I'm going to start off first with the digital sketching part. Um, I want to show you guys how some things work. I'm not going to show you guys how to get the, the templates on. If you really want to know how to do that, I highly suggest that you go check out uh, Liz Merrick's training. Okay, so here, right here is a picture of a sketch that I did uh, alongside the actual cake that I did. And so, as you can see, it, it really helped my, my client to be able to see what the cake was going to look like. Uh, she had sent me a, a, a quick sketch on things and um, showed, you know, basic idea of what she wanted. And, you know, in, we were going to just run with that sketch. But she was really concerned after a little while of, well, is, is this really going to work? You know, she had a bow in it and wondered if the bow would work along with these flowers. And so, you know, I said, you know what, I'll draw out a couple sketches for you, let you uh, decide for yourself what you think looks best. And, um, and so I went in and I was able to draw out this sketch. I sent it to her and she, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so I didn't even worry about the one with the bow because she loved it. Um, and so basically this, this right here, I can almost guarantee that 90% uh, of the time, unless it's, a, yeah, unless it's a money issue, people are going to go with, this, with the cake that you present to them if it looks as good as this, you know, because they want to see professional. They want to see what the cake is going to look like. And if they can see that that's how the cake is going to look, they're going to be a lot more confident in you as an artist, and they're going to be a lot happier paying the amount of money that you want to get from them. So, um, so yeah, these are, these are the, the sketches. Um, like I said, Liz Merrick has a great tutorial on it. I, I will say that a million times throughout this training. <laughs> Go check out her training and, and the, the group. Uh, so anyway, I, I drew out these uh, flowers. Um, I did a method that, that Liz uses of pulling a flower from the internet and then kind of creating your own digital sketch out of that. And I manipulated it enough that I was really happy with the way that it looked and I thought it was really cool. And so um, I'm actually going to be making these available to you guys. Um, I was going to sell them individually and, um, and all of that, but Liz Merritt came up with a new uh, template uh, kit and I'm just going to throw it in with that. So yeah. Thanks, Liz. <laughs> and so, yeah, we may, I may sell these on, you know, on their own later on. But today, uh, you guys are going to be able to get that if you buy the, the new kit of Liz's. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great kit. It's got topsy turvy and uh, I think a octagon, a couple of other things. So it's, it's going to be a really great uh, kit for you to add on to the templates you know, the original templates of the circle and the square templates. Um, so this, uh, the other cake, the one that is completed, is a cake that I made. I was going to make everything out of gum paste because that's what I know and that's what I do. Um, but then I saw this wafer paper class, that uh, Craftsy class that came out, and I thought, oh, I've got to check that out. It is so cool. So I went and I watched the class. I got so much out of it. And I was able to come away from that and create my own flowers um, that, that I thought would be perfect and match this cake uh, the way that I wanted it to, the way that I envisioned it. Um, and just so you know, the border down there, that's also wafer paper. Um, that, that's 
also something that's in the Craftsy class. It's really cool. So um, we are going to move on to, let's see if I can get it here. We're going to share with you, I think we can pull it up here. Here's my workstation. We are going to share with you Photoshop. <laughs> this is this is fun. So uh, you guys, uh, a lot of you have probably seen the training with Liz Merrick. If you haven't, again, check it out. This is how she does her cake sketching, and this is how I do my cake sketching. Um, this is Adobe Photoshop, the the newest version. I I went on last night and got the newest version because I just had to have it. Um, but up until now, I have been working off the most basic Photoshop there is available out there on on the you know desktop com computer. It was um, CS2, which is I think the original Adobe program. So uh, Photoshop program. So it, it's it's possible to do it on any on any version of Photoshop on your computer. I know that a lot of people have been uh, doing their sketches on, on iPads. Um, I, I honestly can't help you there because <laughs> I just, yeah, I can't help you there because I don't, I don't have an iPad. I have a, you know, a, another kind of tablet and I don't have the Photoshop for, for the iPad. So that's something that I really can't uh, help you with. But there are people on the, the Facebook group that can. So if you're doing your sketching from, uh, from your iPad, there are ways to, uh, to figure things out that way. But um, I also wanted to show you guys, boy, I'm all over the place today. I also wanted to show you guys the, the tablet, the drawing tablet that uh, Liz Merrick uh, suggests and recommends. And I highly recommend it too now because I love it. So this right here is the Monoprice drawing tablet. And uh, you can get it on um, the Monoprice website. And you can also get it on Amazon. And uh, Bobby can throw up a link in the chat so you guys can see that. Um, but it comes with this cool pen right here. And I think a lot of people, when, when you first start hearing about the digital cake sketching, uh, you think that it's uh, an actual tablet like an iPad, but it's not. It's totally different. Um, there's, there's just this screen. There is no lighting up of this screen. There are no programs on here. There's nothing, there's nothing really to it. It's basic just drawing. Okay, so you, what you're going to do is you'll draw on this, and it's like the screen of your computer is, is here. And you plug it into your computer, and this turns into your mouse, basically. Um, it's a very high-tech, glorified mouse. But it allows you to do the drawing that, that you want to, to be able to do uh, in order to get a really good-looking sketch. So that's what the Monoprice tablets are all about. And again, Bobby will throw up a, a link, I hope. And um, if not, it's on the group page. Uh, it's pinned at the very top of our group page, the Facebook group page. So um, you can find that there. So yeah, what you're going to do is draw here. It shows up on your computer screen. So yeah, that's, that's basically how this tablet works. It is not an, like an iPad or anything like that. So don't think that you can substitute an iPad for this because it's totally different. And it, it's fairly cheap, fairly inexpensive for being an electronic product. I think on Amazon it's in, in the $50 range. So I, oh, I'm going to keep that out because I'm going to use it. <laughs> OK, so back to Photoshop here. Pull that up. All right. So I already have my uh, templates, my wonderful templates from Liz Merrick on a, a page here. This is actually um, a clear, uh, I guess, a transparent 
thing. I, I put a background on it so that it's easier for you guys to see. I know that checkered background drives my eyes crazy, so, <laughs> so I put a, a background on it for you guys. So there are different layers over here. Um, Liz Merrick explains this really well, but this is something that I didn't understand until I really started getting into Photoshop. But uh, whatever program you decide to use for your cake sketches, you really want to, to have a program that allows layers. And so here we have um, the bottom layer right here, and then we have the top layer right here. And um, you know, different layers. And every time you want to add something, I recommend adding a new layer because then you can move things around. So if I was to add a flower onto this right here without starting or without creating a new layer, I wouldn't be able to move the, the flower around without, you know, moving this top one around also. So that's why that's why we add new layers because each layer can move, can be adjusted, can be colored on. You know, it, it's very, um, very much easier, <laughs> especially if you're starting out. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys just how how easy it is to throw the flowers up onto um, onto this, um, and we are going to basically recreate the the flower or the, the cake that I did. So before I put up my flowers, I'm going to actually put in a border. And I have a, a layer right here that I've already created. If you want to create a layer, there's this little tab down here. You can see that next to the garbage can. And so, um, yeah, so there's that. You can um, create a new layer. You can name your layers. I like to name my layers because I find it easier to find what I'm looking for. Uh, it does show you pictures of, in this little box here, but I mean, it's not, yeah. Sometimes you can't see that very well. So that's why I name mine. Just double click on it and you can name it. So what I'm going to do, and Liz shows a, a video on how to do this, and I think it's super cool, but we are going to create a border uh, on our cake and uh, basically, we're going to double click on this little uh, selecting thing here and choose the elliptical marquee tool. And that's just going to be something that's going to give you an oval or round shape. Uh, double clicking on it allows you to choose different, you know, different things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come and I'm going to take... Um, My, my mouse and put it about here on the side of my cake. I'm going to start, you kind of just have to imagine the circle and, and where it needs to start, where it needs to end. Okay, so there I've got my bottom of my ribbon. And then we're going to add to that, well, we actually have to cut out this top part and then we have to add in the sides. So um, what these things up here do is they allow you to um, add to the selection. This one allows you to subtract from the selection and intersect. With, I don't use the intersect. I, I don't understand that. I think that's more 3D stuff. I don't know. Okay, so we are going to subtract from the selection right now. And we're going to use that same marquee tool. We're going to come up a little ways and we will draw another line, or another oval shape right here. And that's going to cut out that top part. And then we're going to come over to where the little lasso tool is. Instead of click, clicking just on the lasso, again, we're going to right click or double click. Um, however, your computer does it. I, I'm using a Mac. So uh, let's see. Then you want to go to the poly, uh, polygonal. Poly, yeah, that word. <laughs> to make a polygon type shape. Um, select that lasso tool, and that's the one that's going to give you straight lines. Um, and oh, I did I did it backwards. That's okay. We'll have to redo. We'll have to redo the top circle. We're going to add to the selection. I'm going to start down here in the corner and click there. And this 
this tool will allow us to do a straight line. And you can do it any way you want. If you hit the shift button, it lines it up so that it's a perfectly straight line. So that's uh, what we'll do here. And then when you get to where you want it to be, you just click again. And then you come over. You're going to hit shift again so it's a perfect thing here. This is a little different than the way Liz does it, um, but not too much. I just do the steps a little differently. And then just draw a rectangle shape. Just like that. And then that will add to, and we're going to do another um, shape to, to take away. I usually, when I do this, I will um, actually do the, the rectangle shape first and then take or add to and take away. But there we go. There's our there's a border for us. Um, it's not it's not perfect. You can actually move things around. Watch the the um, the YouTube video that Liz put out. It's really really good and it's perfect for it. So we're selecting color right here. So I've clicked down on this bottom thing. We're selecting some color, and I want it to be a little bit more on the reddish pink side, not too crazy pink. OK, and then hit OK. And that is going to, we're filling in. There's a fill marker thing here. And we just click on that. Oh, whoops, undo. You have to make sure that the color you want is on top. <laughs> OK, so there you go. There's our color. And uh, for time's sake, we're not going to add another border on top. And, uh, but that's, that's our border. And we're going to deselect by hitting Command D, or I guess Control D if you're on a desktop, um, not, not a Mac. OK, so there's our border. I would uh, do a more round matching the bottom a little better if I was you know, really caring about the way things are. OK, so right here, I'm going, I've got different windows open here. One is going to be our uh, the white, like an, an open peony type of thing. And then the other one is a pink peony. So these are the, the ones that I have made that we're going to add into the, the new kit. And um, I think eventually I'll sell them separately. But for now, they're just gonna, we're just going to throw them in. You guys get them for free if you purchase the, the template kit. So OK, there's, um, we're going to take this white flower here. We're going to, oh, we have to select the layer. And then we're going to um, bring this over to our four tier. There are different ways to do it. The way that I find the easiest, I'm not sure if anyone else finds this the easiest, but I just take the rectangle marquee tool and I draw right here. And then I hit. Uh, Command C for copy, and then I come over and Command V for paste, and uh, that should give us our. If you can see, it's not there. That's because in our layers right here, it's down at the bottom. So it's really behind the cake right now. So we're going to move it up to the very top so that we can see the flower. So there you go. Uh, there's our flower on there. And then we can do the same with the, the pink peony flower. We're just going to do the same thing. Take our, our rectangular marquee tool, and we're going to select our flower. And then we're going to command copy. And then we're going to come over here and paste. And there we go. Then you hit your selector tool. You can move things around this way. And this is where you can start moving things around and manipulating things, which is really cool. We're just going to um, come up here, and we're going to uh, we're going to duplicate. So we're going to just hit duplicate. Um, and no, that's not right. <laughs> that will duplicate the whole thing. I keep I keep doing that, and it's it's wrong. So uh, we're going to over here. I think that right here, I don't remember how it works. Or you can just hit copy and paste, which I've done. 
and then we'll paste another one. And we'll, we're going to just move these around to where we feel like they should be. I'm going to move one down here and one here. We're going to move this one this way. And then you can start turning them. Um, there's the, air, the different arrows that you can use to turn things um, if you put it in the right place. So the one that has the curved arrows, that means you can turn it. The one that has the... Um, I'm going to apply. You know, then, then you can move things around this way. If you hit the shift button, you can uh, change the size of it without it uh, warping and, and misshaping. And if you hit the command button, I, maybe it's the control button on a, on a uh, Windows computer, but on a Mac it's command. And if you hit that, then you can come to the corners here and you can start moving them around so that they so it looks like they're, you know, kind of squished up this way, you know, things like that. So that's how you move things around. And then eventually, once you get things situated just the way you want, move layers on top of other layers, that's how you're going to get um, all of the, uh, the flowers where you want them to. You have to apply the changes every time. And... Um, I don't know if there's a way to avoid having to apply them every time. Um, so yeah, we are going to, uh, we're just going to call this good for the flowers because we really don't have a ton of time to be changing and doing because I still have to get to the way for paper flowers. But um, so then from there is where you get to be more artistic and come in and, and do the, the detail work. And, and make it look like an actual drawing. The, the thing that I love most about this is the, the ability that, that you have to um, get my screen right. Oh, my tablet's, doing, my tablet's doing a weird thing because I have two screens up. OK, so basically we're going to come over to the brush selection, select your brushes. Um, I like to use the, the brushes that Liz suggests in one of her videos. You can find it on the group page. Um, this one is chalk, and I really, really like the chalk tool. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make it fairly large. It's kind of a weird shape, but we're going to make it fairly large, and we're going to select um, our gray scale. Uh, oh, we already have that. And then we're going to just switch so that the gray is on top. And we're going to do some shading in here. And um, what this is going to do, I've turned the, the opacity down so that um, usually when this one comes with a higher opacity, but I turned it way down so that it's almost see-through, so that it looks like it's a shadow. So that's what I've done here. And I'm just going to kind of come in and draw some lines and just kind of go back and forth not wanting to show up very well here. Maybe I'll turn the opacity up just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. My computer's going really slow, not wanting to deal with this. There we go. Turn the opacity up a little bit. OK, so I this is going to be really uh, loud. I, I, you guys can probably see some of the shadow, but I'm gonna, you know, just kind of emphasize it a little bit. Oh, and also, ah, I forgot to show you. When you're putting in shadows, I, I highly suggest coming over to where the layer is that you're doing your shadows on. Hit Command and click on that layer, and that highlights that layer so that when you're, um, when you're doing your shadows. If you come out this way, it's not going to draw out here. It's going to just, it's going to stay within your cake. So there we go. There's, there's kind of our shadow marks. That's the way I um, did the shadows in, in my cake. And then what I like to do, I just turn the opacity up. I, I use this chalk tool more than anything else. I really, I really love it. So um, I'll turn the opacity up quite a bit, and then I'm going to downsize. Oops, that's making it bigger. 
Um, there's the bracket keys on your on your uh, keyboard. Those are quick um, size changers, so you don't have to come over here and change. You know, come up here and change the size of your brush every time you want to change it. You just hit the bracket keys um, on on your computer, and the left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it bigger. So I'm just going to go really small with it. And then this is where I'm going to start doing, you know, my my lines, my detail lines. We're going to go even smaller. And I think I'm going to darken my color a little bit here so that I can see over the shadow marks. And so it looks like, you know, kind of a, a pencil or chalk, you know, drawing. And you can go, oh, I'm going to go even smaller. Oops. Okay, so there, there are... Uh, where you can do your lines here and with our shadows and um, just kind of draw them in. You don't you don't need them to be perfect, whoops, but just kind of, you know, the sketchy type lines. Um, the, the lighter you draw on the tablet, and on the drawing tablet, the, the, the sh yeah, thinner your line and the lighter your line will be. If you press down really hard, you're going to get a nice hard line, but you can ease off and get a really nice fine line. So um, the chalk isn't really good at getting different uh, sizes, but it's, yeah, it does different colors the, the harder you push. So basically that's that's the whole idea of how to do uh, how to do this. The thing I really wanted to show you was putting the flowers on the cake and and making it look, you know, like it like it belongs. And um, so the sketching I, I'll come back to this picture um, of the. I'll show you guys the picture that we did again, right here. There you go. So you can see all of the the lines and everything that I have added to um, this this sketch, and it just makes it look like it was done by pencil and people will never realize and, and know that this was actually done on a computer and that's what I really like about the digital cake sketching is to, to be able to change it so that it's you know so that it looks like a sketch I don't I don't like them to look too digital I want it to look artistic so that's why that's why I did these flowers and that's why you know I have them available to you guys so alright Someone asked a question, if you have Adobe Creative Suite 5 and Adobe Acrobat 9 Pro, should you still purchase Photoshop? I really don't know that question. Um, go onto the Facebook group and, and ask that question. I know that there are quite a few people there that have been in graphic design for a long time and, and know about the different programs. The only thing I really know is Photoshop. So um, I would suggest going on, on and answering that question there. I know that Miguel is here, and Miguel has been a huge part of, of our group and answers a lot of those types of questions. And so um, he says CS5 should have Photoshop in it. So, so you should be able to, to, to work with that. 